ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ವ್ಯಾಸಶಂಕರ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಿದ್ಧೇಶ್ವರ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ಒಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಐ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಿವ್ರಾಜಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕುರ್ತಾಲಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ 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 ಸಿದ್ಧೇಶ್ವರಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಜಿ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಪೀಠಾಧೀಶ್ವರಿ ಶ್ರೀ 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 ರಮ್ಯಾನಂದ ಭಾರತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ಜಿ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ರಾಜಮಾತಂಗಿ ವಾರಾಹಿ ದೇವಿ ಕ್ಷಿಪ್ರ ಗಣಪತಿ ಕಾಳಿ ಕಾಲಭೈರವ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಂಗಿರ ಮಾತಾ ಧೂಮಾವತಿ ಶನೀಶ್ವರ ಕಾಲಭೈರವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಜಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಏನು ಚೇಯಮಂಟರು ಏ ತೀಮಂಟರು ಇಪ್ಪುಡು ಪರವಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ವಿನ್ಪಿಸ್ತಂದಾ ವಿನ್ಪಿಸ್ತಂದಾ ಓಕೆ ಸೋ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ You want to come here and talk? <clears throat> we are all celebrating Sharan Navratris. I want to imbibe in every one of you that there are more than one Navratris. There is more to it than just Sharan Navratri. There is Vasanta Navratri and there are two Gupta Navratris. One is ಆಷಾಢ ಮಾಸ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಘ ಮಾಸ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಶರಣ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದುರ್ಗಾ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ದಸ ಮಹಾವಿದ್ಯಾಸ್ ವಸಂತ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ದೇವಿ ಆಷಾಢ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ರಾಜಶ್ಯಾಮಲಾ ದೇವಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಘ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಾರಿ ಆಷಾಢ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ವಾರಾಹಿ ದೇವಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಾಘ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ರಾಜ ಶ್ಯಾಮಲಾ ದೇವಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ನವರಾತ್ರೀಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಡೇಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯು ಯು ನೌ ಯು ಪ್ರೇ ವನ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಡೇ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಸಾಧನ ಯು ಡೂ ವೆದರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಪ ಹೋಮ Uh, you know dhyana or you know astotram or shatanamavali or, or sahasranamavali whatever you do it gets multiplied by thousands of times because that these are the divine days where the divine mother's energy is spread all over the universe okay again today is uh, bhuvaneshwari devi's alankaram bhuvaneshwari devi is the fourth of the dasa mahavidyas fourth mahavidya among the dasa mahavidyas if you really look at bhuvana eshwari bhuvaneshwari if you look at from a sanskrit perspective it is a compound which is a combination or sandhi of two words bhuvana and eshwari bhuvana means words universes okay some people call it brahmandas okay bhuvana esh ishwari she is the queen goddess of all the universes that's what her name means she is also according to rigveda she is also connected with the uh, divine earth prithvi and in various puranas she is also connected with varaha avatar of vishnu she is the creator of all the worlds because she is in charge of it so she is nature prakriti and she commands the whole universe all universes all galaxies the entire milky way she commands it in very simple now to cover each mahavidya that i am doing it will take 
you know, we can spend 20, 30 days also. So I'm trying to condense everything in 20 minutes, right? So <clears throat> I'll be hitting the main points. She's the goddess of universe. How does she, how is her appearance? She shines like a rising sun. She shines, you know, if you go and observe rising sun, that's how she looks like. A lot of people who take Bhuvaneshwari Devi Mantra, they go at the sunrise and do their sadhana during that first hour. She always has a smiling face. Now we spoke of all the Dasa Mahavidyas. Everybody is a fierce goddess, Tamasa Rajasa Devatas. But she is a very, very smiling, loving, very peaceful Devata. Okay? So if you, what is that everybody looks for in life? People run after money. They go after luxuries or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, once you get it, what is it you seek? Peace. You want to have peace. If you want to have peace, people do Bhuvaneshwari Mantra Sadhana. She is always smiling. She has one face, three eyes, a very delicate nose and four hands. Out of the four hands, two hands are abhayam, abhayahastam. One is for refuge and one is for fearlessness. One is a varadahastam. The other one, she has a noose. And the, uh, the fourth hand, she holds a ankusham, which is gold. You know, usually you, you that's an instrument you you, which is used to control elephants. Okay? <clears throat> Whoever sees her face, they get cheated. If you, if you are upset and everything, and you go and see somebody who is smiling and is full of peace and happiness, what happens to you? Right? You also start feeling peaceful and, uh, you know, happy. That's what her face does to all the sadhakas. It cheers them up. Her crown is made of moon. Moon is her crown. Very peaceful devata. If you understand, if you understand bliss, and if you are in the spiritual path, there is something called divine bliss. It has to be experienced. That is what she represents and that is what she gives to her sadhakas. She is a very peaceful devata. Whoever she graces will get wealth equivalent of Kubera. She created the Trimurtis and I will tell you a story about that. She created Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma and then Lord Shiva. In Devi Bhagavatam, <clears throat> there is a story. Long, long ago when there was no universes and everything in the beginning of times, Lord Vishnu was sleeping. Okay? And Brahma was supposed to do the creation. He was not able to do. Lord Vishnu was sleeping. He tried to, and uh, out of his Nabi, some Brahmanda Purana, ah, sorry, Bhagavad, uh, Devi Bhagavatam says, from his navel, Nabi, came Madhukaitaba, two Rakshasas. Some Puranas say from his ear, but no matter from where they came, there were two Rakshasas who came. And what is their nature? Disturb everybody. So basically, they were bothering Lord Brahma, and they were affecting the, his work, which is to create. He tries to pray to Lord Vishnu, please wake up. These two people are uh, <clears throat> disturbing me, bothering me. But of course, he was in deep sleep. 
then Brahma invokes and prays for Yoga Maya. She is the Adi Parashakti. She comes, she wakes Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. And then Lord Vishnu kills uh, Madhu and Kaitava. That's a, another story, but he kills at the end of the day. Then all the three people assemble in front of the Yoga Maya, the three Murtis. Um, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. All three of them stand in front of Yoga Maya. And then she says, she commands them, come with me. Then a, a beautiful chariot appears. They all board the chariot and sh then a journey begins. So what happens is when they are going, they leave that universe that they belong to and they are going up. When they are going up, they see more universes, more universes, which has their own Trimurtis and their own things going on. So after passing many, many Brahmandas, which is nothing but universes, they finally come to an amazing loka, amazing loka. Okay, it is so beautiful and um, you know wonderful. They come, they are about to enter that loka, and all of a sudden, these trimurtis get transformed into women because no men are an allowed in that loka. That is called Bhuvaneshwari loka. Okay, only women are allowed. So Trimurtis transform, are transformed into women. And they go appear in front of a very divine being, a divine mother who is looking at them with so much love and affection and who is shining like brilliant sun, millions of suns. They prostrate in front of her and, um, you know, do their, offer their, you know, pranams. And she is Bhuvaneshwari. Okay. And then she blesses them and uh, tells them to go back to your universe and do your job properly. And if you get into any trouble or if you need any help, just let me know. Let one of our people know. I'll come and take care of uh, those issues. So that is one story in Devi Bhagavatam regarding Bhuvaneshwari. In Kenopanishad, there is another story about Bhuvaneshwari. <coughs> As usual, always there is a fight or a war going on between Devas and Asuras, demons and divine beings. And once Devas really win big, they basically are, you know, hands down, they win it, win against Asuras. Once you win like that, what happens? Arrogance steps in, right? They are like, I am the ultimate person. Oh, we are the most powerful. We defeated these Rakshasas. We killed them, blah, blah, blah. That was what was going on. And the Divine Mother, you know, every there are mothers here. If your children are getting arrogant, what do you do? What do you do? No, no, there's no spanking in Devaloka. So she has her own loving way of teaching them that arrogance is not good. So she figures out she figures out a, a way how to teach them not to have arrogance. So what she does is, while these guys were celebrating their victory, there she appears as a very bright light, which is in the form of a woman. figures out a way. Can you hear me? So she figures out a way. So she appears as a very bright light in the form of a woman. And obviously it is shining so much. What happens? 
it bothers, right? So these people get bothered. So Indra, he tells, go find out what's going on. Who is that? They thought it was a, you know, some rakshasa or whatever it is. Who is that? Go find out. So first, he sends Agni Deva. Okay? So Agni Deva, with all his arrogance, he goes in front of her, that bright light, and says, who are you? And that white light asks a question back, like, who are you? Then Agni Deva says, I am Lord Agni. And then the light says, oh yeah, great. What is your power? What can you do? He said, I can burn anything. I can destroy anything. Anything, I can do it. She said, oh really? Great. So she takes a straw of grass, a dry straw grass, okay? And she places in front of him. She said, can you burn this? And Agni Deva tries his best. Nothing. Like, you know, there is this story, he huffs and puffs, nothing happens, okay? He couldn't even burn one millimeter or one iota of that dry grass, straw. Then he feels ashamed. He goes back to Indra and said, I don't know who that, what that power is. I don't know what's going on. I could not, you know, it is very powerful. I couldn't do anything. Then Indra says, okay, let me send Vayudeva. Then he sends Vayudeva. The same routine happens. He says, who are you? And the Divine Mother says, who are you? He says, I am Vayudeva. And he, she says, what can you do? What is your power? He says, I can, you know, with my power, I can crumble mountains. I can uproot trees and do whatever I want, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And she says, okay. Here is the single grass, dry stro straw of a grass right here. Can you blow this away? And of course, he huffs and puffs. Nothing happens. Then he also feels ashamed and he goes back to Indra and reports. Now Indra gets, you know, he's, he's a smart guy. He's a king of devas, right? You know, I sent two of my powerful guys and they couldn't do anything to this power. Then he sits in dhyan closes his eyes and invokes his inner strength and tries to find out who is this Shakti, who is this power. Then she find, he finds out that it is a Divine Mother. And then he realizes what they were all up to. Okay. Like I said, Divine Mother has her own way of teaching their kids in a loving way. He realizes his mistake. He tells all his devas that we all made a mistake. We should go. So they all go to the Divine Mother, seek her blessings and ask for her forgiveness. And they claim or they promise that they will never exhibit or behave in an arrogant way. So these are two very, very popular stories of Bhuvaneshwari Mata, Divine Mother. Now, obviously, Everybody wants, okay, if I do her sadhana, what's in for me? What am I going to get, right? Everybody without a benefit, nobody does anything, right? So let's see what are the benefits of uh, praying or doing sadhana of Bhuvaneshwari Devi. She is considered the goddess of love unless you have, see, what is divine bliss? When you are peace, when you are at peace, what is that feeling? That is unconditional love. There is no power in this universe that is greater than love. I have given multiple examples. Okay, we have seen lot of stories where people say the rishis stood in their one leg, which pancha agnis, five agni kundas around them, and did you know kathor amaina tapas and and everything. We have heard those stories, but we have also heard the stories of Mirabai. What was her sadhana? Did she do any of that? No. 
her sadhana was just love, unconditional love for Lord Krishna. When her husband even knows and give the, the most potent poison for her to drink, she drinks it happily and nothing happens to her. That's how powerful the, the emotion of that love, that bliss, that love is. And if anyone and all of you can get that kind of love to the divine, nothing like it. That will take you sadhana, you know, you can do crores and crores of japa, but that bhavana can take you way faster. But is it easy to get that bhavana? It's not that easy. So that is sadhana. Okay, <clears throat> one who worships her with a true heart and prays her re regularly will be blessed with 64 divine virtues. There are 64 divine virtues and they will be blessed with those 64 divine virtues. They will be blessed with mesmerizing personality. When somebody is having that much love, every that personality is, will be mesmerizing. You know, when they are walking, people will turn their head and look, who is coming? Right? That's the personality people will get when they are doing that. All round financial prosperity because they are at peace. They will have financial stability, prosperity. All obstacles will become because you are at bliss. When will you have that bliss? So you will be happy with whatever you have. And the Divine Mother will take care of you. So you will have a very good house and everything. It gives you courage, confidence and sensitivity. Because she is wearing moon as her crown, any negative effects of moon in their chart will be nullified. Protects from disease, enemies and problems. Bestows totality in married life and make it happy, prosperous and comfortable. So these are all the benefits of praying to Bhuvaneshwari Mata. Now we have to touch mantra sadhana obviously. In mantra sadhana there are so many mantras, but there are three great mantras of Bhuvaneshwari. There is one Ekakshari, only one alphabet, very powerful Bijakshara, Ekakshari mantram. And then there is a Triakshari, three alphabet mantra, that is the second one. And Panchakshari mantra also of Divine Mother. These are very, very popular. There are various hundreds of other mantras, but these are very, very powerful mantras. Once they, once usually when they are, they want to take that path of love towards the Divine, they usually get initiated. That is a very, very tough path. Okay, believe me, lot of people can do crores and crores of japa, but to get that bhavana of that love, unconditional love and divine love is very difficult. But with that, I will stop uh, today. Uh, you know, may the Divine Mother, Bhuvaneshwari, bless each and every one of you. Uh, and. Uh, May the divine blessings of Swamiji and Mataji and all the Pita Devatas of our Pitam bless each and every one of you. Swasti.